Hello pilots and welcome to Area 51. Today we will be looking at the uh, MiG-29A and performing cockpit familiarization. The Soviet designation of the MiG-29A is the 9-12, with the MiG-29S being the 9-13. The dual RD-33 engines are on display. The old Smokies producing up to 8,000 kilograms of thrust each. But in this video, we will be familiarizing with the cockpit layout. As you can see, it is far improved from the terrible ergonomics of the MiG-21 and the MiG-23. The canopy and the cockpit provide much better situational awareness for the pilot compared to the flogger and the fish bed. Now, as we look down towards the instrument panels, we can tell that the Soviet engineers have really stepped up their game. The controls are more intuitive, but still not at the level that you'd be used to with your F-15 or the F-16. We'll start the familiarization on the right side behind the pilot's hip and go all the way to the left. So let's take a look. The first panel that is at the very back is the control and test panel in the gray insert. And next to it, along the side of the cockpit, is the system power panel for powering up things like weapons, ACS, the recorder, radio, and other components. The seven switches just above that on the wall of the cockpit is the generator panel. And below that, and above the gray rectangle of the secure communications, is the engine start component. To the left of the generator on the side panel is the illumination and brightness controls, and these also extend to the side panel that angles next to your right knee. On the angled panel, just below that are the ARK channels, as well as in the very corner, you will see a two set of switches, one with the air conditioning and environmental controls, and also you will see the vertical set of status displays, which will light up with your aircraft statuses. The programmable navigation system is in the very right hand corner and has the orange switches on it. If you have any time in the SU-27 flanker, you will find that the central console is very similar with the RWR in the bottom right and the fuel on the right side. On the left side, we will have speed indicators, roll, AOA, as well as our mock speeds and a built-in chronometer. There's additional controls behind the stick, which may be hard to spot, but these are used for short range, long range engagement for air to air, emergency jettison, and other modes. To the top left, we have our settings for our heads up display, such as switching between different types of navigation modes and combat modes. In the corner panel, we've got the taxi light controls, gear up and down, various options for our engagement and stabilization, such as our dampener and the trim of our rudders. For this video, we'll skip over the great square panel and look at the three rows of switches with the barber pole surrounding the fire suppression system and the fuel cutoff. The flaps are controlled with the three buttons, which are located right below the throttle at idle. Just like in the MiG-21, the round square dial will allow you to select your ARK channels. The L-shaped cluster has a number of functions such as 100% oxygen and the tension of the stick and the oxygen mix itself is at the very back to the left. Remember pilots, this is just the first video as an intro high level overview, but make sure you leave a comment if you want to see continuation and more of these videos as you get ready for the MiG 29A. But for those of you eager to jump this airplane into the air, let's take a look at the startup procedure. The startup procedure will start on the wall of the MiG-29A by first toggling the six switches into the on position. After that, you will need to power up the systems as well as start the engines. The engine start has three modes, left, right, or both. The default setting is both. As the aircraft is designed to operate at the frontline positions, you can start up with the internal APU and internal batteries or by using the airbase equipment. That switch is at the very top of the six switch generator component on the side panel of the MiG-29A. Interestingly enough, when you do start up your engines, the default is the auto start. However, you are able to manually start them but the procedure requires the left engine to be started first. 
the left side of the cockpit provides additional important controls for the fuel flow and fire suppression as well as emergency restart of engines if you are required to do so while in flight. In the section of the panel right below your throttle you will see a set of three components outlined with a barber pole. This is the fire suppression in the center as well as the control of the fuel flow to each of the engines right and left. Below that you have a afterburner override as well as the right and left engine start next to each other closest to your body and these are intended to be used in flight. This concludes the initial overview of the MiG 29A cockpit to get you ready for the full fidelity MiG 29 module from Eagle Dynamics and this was Plasma. I'll catch you guys in the next video.